Okay, I'll call the meeting to order. We have no three minute delegations. Uh, can I get a motion to confirm the agenda, please? Sherry and Doug, all in favor? That's carried, thank you. Any conflicts of pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof? None declared. 4.1 minutes, confirmation of the minutes of the 656th session of council from March 18th. Uh, can I get a motion to adopt those minutes? Uh, Wendy and Doug, any discussion, any questions, concerns arising from those minutes? None, all in favor? Carried, thank you. Delegations. We have two this evening. The first one is from Colin Spears and Susie Meisner from the Grassroots Growers. Uh, I think you know the routine with the microphones there. Just come on up, press the silver button. The red light should come on. And the floor is yours. Okay. Well, thank you for, for seeing us again. Um, do we need to go through everything or has... Well, I, I'm a, assuming council has, has read this. I, I have read it. It's your basically your, uh, your plan mm -hmm. for the season. Um, and I guess uh, whatever you want to elaborate on or, or what questions or concerns you have, uh, go ahead. Uh, well, I guess basically we're having gone up and viewed the, the new site that Jake suggested, we really liked it, and Jake had a few suggestions that you've, or just suggested that we could request a few uh, items there once, once it's been approved by you to proceed. And I think the main thing would be the cleanup of the site, followed by all the, I can read the, there's 10 or 11 things we can request. We're not expecting everything. Yes, certainly. Yeah. 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 So the cleanup of the site, soil samples to be taken, perhaps the soil available to be used. Can we erect a secure storage if we can't use something that is there in one of the buildings? Uh, to provide clean gravel, there's plenty of that lying around there. Uh, and the same with a, a good planting medium. There's a dead tree which needs to be removed just for a safety perspective. And we were wondering if there was access to the toilet in the north building. These are all things that Jake said could be, could be arranged. To dig below grade for the ground level planters and to allow use of the on-site water tank. Now I had a thought yesterday and wondering if that could even be connected to an eaves trough from one of the buildings. So that would be sort of conserving extra water. Uh, to provide filter blanket or landscape fabric from storage and to upgrade the motion sensor light on one of the buildings. The possible use of fence material from storage. And if you have it, 200 feet of garden hose. And I th think I missed the water faucet in the wall to, to add a water faucet, which evidently is a fairly simple matter. So. And uh, we also asked about insurance as well, whether you would provide it. Uh, on behalf of the grassroots growers, whether you'd attach it to your overall, L you know, uh, LNA insurance that you have to have. Yeah, well, it would be Stone Mills, not LNA, Stone Susie, Mill, but, but generally uh, um, community groups that use our properties or facilities are, in, are included. Okay. I don't know if it has to be specifically <clears throat> itemized as to what group, uh, Brandy. Are you, are you uh, familiar with that? Because we'll have volunteers coming too on and off yeah. that property, so it's a you know yeah. something we should. I just wanted to add that. Let's just get the insurance clarified. Okay, here. sure. 
Uh, through the chair, um, yes, so we would just let our insurance provider know that uh, the grassroots growers would be using township property and they would be, uh, they would fall under our umbrella policy. Okay, so thanks, that's clear. Thanks, up. Brandy. I, I just wanted to add that new, new Legacy is really excited that the prospect of receiving food grown from this garden, they, they, there's a big need evidently. Yeah, so, yeah. Doug, go ahead. Yeah, just a question here. You uh, said the second site. I'm not aware of the second site. So enlighten me on where we're talking about now. When we were viewing site one, which is up close to the grocery store, Jake said that he realized there was a site just on the other side of the baseball diamond behind the public works buildings, which is currently a big area which has just got mounds of gravel and various assorted building material building material okay. that needs to be cleaned up anyway. And he said, if you can see through all that, then maybe there's potential here and we could definitely see through through that. And that seemed like a really, really nice area for us. Uh, that's funny. I just wasn't aware that we were looking at another site besides the one behind the store. Yeah. So you've kind of let me on, and I'm not aware of what the condition of that site is, how much work's required. I mean, the road superintendent will have to report on that, I would think, how much work he can get accomplished there. He said it would take a couple of days. Mm -hmm. but it, and maybe some scraping because it's pretty, the, the, the stuff there is now is being used for years and years, but bits of mechanic, you know, oil and all sorts of stuff are, is in the ground. So I guess after soil samples, we'd have to, maybe you could scrape away the top for us if, if that's possible as well and take that away. That's just a, a thought because as well as the, uh, as well as the um, right. boxes, Raised boxes, we would like to do some in-ground planting, which would include a few maybe fruit trees and that sort of thing. So we need something decent under there. We can we can dig the holes and put decent stuff in, but if it's going to leach, do you know what I mean, from all the other stuff, I think we're going to have to take that fairly seriously. Indeed. My feeling is that most of the oil is in the northwest corner which is away from where we would be but i don't have any evidence on that but just from where the tanks are and where the smell was coming uh, sherry i'm just wondering since it is at the area of the roads building if we've talked to the roads department and make sure they can do without this storage area mr thompson <laughs> <laughs> so through you your worship can you hear me you, you want me to go up with, you, you can do it right okay. from there jeff okay um this is one of the sites that when uh, the grassroots came to the municipality one of the sites that we kind of said might work um Unfortunately, this year, that's kind of our lay down area for the Peel Street and uh, around the arena project. So right now we have um, granular, we have storm sewer there, we have catch basins that were dropped off today um, in that site. So that we would use on the project around the arena. So for us to clean that up and, and, and take another, move all that material that we have there now, um, extensional cost to move that and, and dig it out. And we're kind of at a planning season where I'm thinking you guys need this tomorrow, not. No. No. No, this would really this would be whenever it works. This would obviously be nice like to next do year. It within a year, <laughs> yeah, you know, if that's next year what it takes. Okay, next okay. year. Okay, I'm I'm thinking, you know, you want to get into the planning season now, right? But 
Well, we would we would love to, but if but it, I mean, if Rome isn't so if, in a day, so. exactly. So if this is uh, next spring planning, we're perfect. fine with would that. Give us more time to plan yeah. and do the that to that to that. If that works for you. That I'm sure absolutely, it would work for us. absolutely. Next year would be fine. Great. This yeah. year is not <laughs> ideal. So that was one of the locations that I talked with uh, our. Uh, yeah, whatever your name is. <laughs> it's Jake Gettler. And then, um, and then which, Jake, which would work uh, right. for you and, and, and the municipality, right? Well, but this good. year is just kind of not really, you know, a, a, a good enough. timing, right? Jake, can I, sorry, Linda. No, Jake also mentioned that um, at one point you were thinking of tearing down those, the north and the east building. Now that's, but many, many years on. Jake, are you? Is that premature? <laughs> Here you go. Sorry. <clears throat> yes, through your worship. Yeah, I did kind of mention um, at one point in time that the uses of a roads building next to a playground and a ball field were kind of incompatible uses from many decades ago and probably decades from now that, that those two incompatible uses of children running around with roads trucks is probably not going to really be something that the municipality will want. Um, this all kind of began, um, to be honest with you, staff wasn't really that uh, excited about um, them, the, the grassroots growers moving into the field behind the store, um, just because you know there was a lot of different plans um, in the future for that. Um, and when I got there that day, it became apparent to me the grassroots growers weren't really that excited about that site either. Um, so I had met with Jeff and Jeff had mentioned to me that, you know, there may be a site and he, we kind of went and visited it, that if we kind of clean it up, um, you know, it's, it's a site where there's actually water nearby. Um, uh, there's actually a water tank there. It needs a lot of work to clean it up, but it kind of looks like an eyesore right now. And it's maybe something the township should clean up anyways. And that kind of led us into this talk with the, the grassroots growers. And, um, uh, and I mentioned to them, you know, if you're coming to council and you want something, um, you know, in terms of a water spout, I mean, that none of this is in the budget for this year. And make sure if there was ever a need that you would kind of mention it because I can't do it without council resolution. And that maybe led to a lot of asks and wants. And I think the grassroots growers are understandable that um, if a very few of those things uh, happen next year or the year after the year, I think they were just kind of, it was kind of more of a wish list to look at. So anyways, I'm sorry if there's some confusion with council and all this happening. So, um, Wendy, you've been waiting patiently. Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, I think this is a, a really good alternative. It's probably the best that we've seen of all the plans, and I'm, gra I'm glad that um, the roads and the grassroots growers have come to a compromise or a, an agreement about timelines. My question is, um, Jeff, uh, Mr. Thompson, um, what do you feel, uh, do you think there is at all a possibility that they could do a late fall planting? I know there are certain things that you do plant in the late fall, like garlic. Mm -hmm. um, so would you be off that site in time for them to put in a garlic bed or no. whatever else is it? No? Okay. <laughs> I know you won't be. <laughs> Actually, through you, uh, Your Worship, I'm hoping we're done in that project in July. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And then it's all cleaned up. And if it's Council's wishes, we could have that site prepared and cleaned up for the grassroots. Well, oh. fine. We're, we're Crystal Lee, you had some here, yeah. so that's fine. Go ahead, Crystal Lee. I know you want to do some raised beds, but then you're also talking about planting directly in the ground dependent on a soil test. Yes. You might want to do the soil test first yes. in, before we even know if this is a suitable site. I think that might be first step because if it's contaminated, you may want to find a different location. Too, so that's yeah. kind of first yeah. step, I think. Yeah. That was my first thought too. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm sure Jeff can point out areas where there's potential contamination there based on past history and, and where it would be less likely. So you can 
decide where to soil test. So um, it seems like we've thrashed it out a little bit here. Um, my, my only question, did anyone have anything else from council? I just had a question or two. Um, so Jeff, you're, you're using that area basically for storage for the Peel Street and, and Arena work for this year. Does that not imply though that at some time in the future for projects, you're gonna want that site again, or is this just sort of the last use of that site in your mind? Uh, in Through you, your worship, um, in my mind, we really don't use it for much more than storage of granular and, and materials, but um, we really don't need that area, that site. As far as uh, testing of the soils, if council wishes, we're doing a fill management plan on Peel Street and um, Addington Street where we're doing the construction. If we want to do soil samples, we can include that to this site if council wishes that, which is a cost of 21, 22,000 doing the uh, soil samples on the construction site we're done now. So um, for another two or 3,000, we could do a soil sample on that site. Okay, thanks. So that's, that's the parameters. Um, anything else? I would just, well, I'd like to thank you for everything here, but um, of, oh, yeah. The world is right, right. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd like to thank you for considering this. But um, of the requests that we put in there, I think the most important would be the water faucet in the building, followed by hydro and use of the toilet. Okay, that's been noted. Um, so, uh, Council, what is your wishes? Do I have a motion here that somebody wants to craft? Uh, yes, Wendy. Uh, I, I would like to move that we receive the report and um, that the various items that have been discussed, uh, water faucet, hydro, use of toilet, soil testing, and um, that would be about it, be... Um, lighting um, be um, looked at by staff. Did you have a question, Sherry? No? Okay, Doug seconded that. Any further discussion? All in favor? That's carried. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for your time. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, our second delegation this evening is from John Neisman, Enterprise Community Cherry Events, Moscow and Yarker Ballfields. John, you know the routine with the uh, microphones. Sure. Yeah, fine, yeah. So thank you for allowing me to be here again. I was here roughly, um, I think it was six weeks ago for the first time. So I'm not 100% familiar with um, motions and procedure, but um, basically I've got kind of like good news, bad news, and then more good news. So I just kind of put everything in a package, kind of to, we can follow along a little bit. And then some of it's just notes for me to remember to bring up. Um, so you'll see at the beginning um, where we've got events held. So, so far at the Enterprise Hall, uh, we've had nine games nights. And there's just a basic summary. I don't want to get too boring. Um, there's been a total of 409 that have attended. So it's averaging 45 um, people per night. And it's only 81.29 is the average um, profit after our, our um, expenses. 
So it's just a donation jar on games night. Um, and that was before we started the canteen. So the last time I was here, we didn't do a canteen. And so this is new uh, from six weeks ago. So we've had three canteens with the games night. Um, we fed 92 people. So it averages 31 per night. And our profit is 40483. So it's roughly 134.94 profit after expenses of food. And it's all volunteer work, my wife and I. Um, then you see there was um, another breakfast. So we're 534 people have attended the four breakfasts. So we're averaging about 134 people at the big breakfast. And the fund so far is $3,917 that we've raised. Um, so it's averaging 1114. Um, this is kind of old news, the Valentine's chicken dinner for Jay Dearborn. Uh, we generated $2,400 total with the meal. So you see briefly at $74.53 that our little um, charity group has, um, has brought in so far. Um, and then you'll see the disbursements. So some of it's old and the last two I think are new. So um, new Legacy Center in December, you can see is 1,015. Uh, the Burke family uh, was 1,502, that tragedy in, uh, in Tamworth area. Um, Jay Dearborn, the 2400, you'll see 880 of that was generous donations in a jar. Um, and then the Enterprise School was 825. The one the council doesn't know about is the one we just had in March on the 16th. Uh, we had 121 and we donated 825. The drawback is we only, you'll see there's a note there where it says $250 top up from games night. For whatever reason, it was the lowest donation night or day for breakfast. So normally we average $9.50 to $10 per person, but it was considerably lower for whatever reason that night. So we only generated $575 in profit um, after we paid for the food. So from the three canteen games nights that we had, we took $250 from that to top it up to 825 um, and that was for Yarker Ball. So I originally approached Joe who looks after the uh, Ball and Enterprise. They said that they're self-sufficient, they don't require any money, they're okay with equipment. Um, so then I, I, I was talking to, uh, I think Jake Detler, not to put him on the spot, but was asking about other ball. Um, I wasn't aware of it, but there was no Yarker ball the previous year. So there's a Wessendorp family did it for, I think, eight years. Someone was supposed to take over Yarker softball last year and they didn't. So there was some damage and question about equipment. There's a, a nice lady that's taking over the softball for Yarker. Um, so that's why we decided to um, have the breakfast for them. So you can see we've got, we've donated all of these funds. So the 6567, has gone out to these, um, what, five, I guess. So we have, in the next column, you'll see planned events. So on April the 20th, upcoming breakfast um, is going to go towards the Enterprise ball field um, for dugout roofs. Um, I don't know how many in this room follow our uh, Facebook page. When we put up a, a generic picture of the steel roof above the dugout and said that we would like to make a cash donation um, towards these uh, dugout roofs. There is a family, I don't know these people, Adam and Krista Bremner. Uh, what's that, sorry? So they, it's, it's amazing. So they came forward, um, sent us a message through Facebook and said, we would like to provide all of the steel for the roofing for both of those. So they wanted to know how many sheets of steel we would require. Um, I just passed the information over to Jake Detler and then he reached out to them to figure out what um, for the donation for the steel. Um, how that came about, when I was talking to Joe at Enterprise, because we call ourselves Enterprise Community Charity Events, we focus on Stone Mills Township. Um, so when they said they didn't require anything for their ball club, they had mentioned for about 10 years, there's been uh, talk about these dugout roofs. Um, when I asked um, my contact basically uh, before coming to council six weeks ago 
was Jason Sands and Jake Detler. We met maybe three or four different times. Um, and they kind of helped me on who we should be helping, like the new Legacy Centre and so on. Um, so I asked you, are you sure you don't need anything for Ball in Enterprise? And he said, we're good. But what would be really handy is two things. One was a roof for the dugouts, because they talked about it for a while. And the other, but he said, I don't know what would be involved. He's in construction, would be a scoreboard. So when I heard scoreboard, I thought, because there's one in Moscow, it's electronic and... I think it's going to be a fortune. But um, I asked him what about Emmanuel, like old school. And he said, that would be really neat. So it's just a, a brief conversation that we had. So that's how that kind of came about. Um, so I haven't done anything with scoreboard at all. And then um, the, the bad news part, um, which we can talk about later in terms of scheduling, I'm having some concerns and I didn't want to come forward and say his name and being on YouTube, but I'm having a lot of difficulty and resistance when it comes to the rental of the enterprise hall. Um, so Don Femick and I have not seen eye to eye on a few things. Um, so I don't know how we can resolve it. Um, so there's um, a tentative schedule that we had set up um, and we do it for the year. So basically, um, we pull out the calendar and we jot down, because we'd like to do, as a, as a charity group, we'd like to do one breakfast a month and two games nights per month. And we basically, with the, the staff, nice ladies in the front office, we kind of go through and say, if we can be the third Saturday of every month for breakfast, that would be a benefit, and then kind of stagger the two Fridays for games night. In the last little while, it's becoming more difficult um, to get the games night. So we had tentatively set up um, in the books for Friday, May the 10th, and we got a call roughly, my wife would know for sure, but say three weeks ago, we got a call that May 10th is no longer available. Um, so I saw online that they're having a dance. Don Fenwick and Rob, I believe, is having a dance on the 11th. So... Um, I'm not sure if we could, I guess we can't have it on the 10th because they need the 10th. Um, so it's kind of an unfortunate thing when there hasn't been a lot of activity at Enterprise Hall. We've had this schedule and it's kind of thrown it off a little bit, um, but I'm sure we can work around that. Um, May 24th is the next scheduled uh, games night. And we were called and told that that night's not available either. Um, I just clarified today at the office. Um, so there's a, a party on the Saturday, the 25th. There's nothing going on at the hall on the Friday, the 24th. So what's been happening is we have our volunteer crew when we're done, we clean up, we sweep, we mop the floor, everything's nice and clean before we leave. So the, the people who, and I don't know who it is, but whoever it is that's renting the hall on the 25th had mentioned to the staff at the front that if we want the games night to happen on the 24th, it's not a concern for them. So I'm a little bit confused on basically procedure of, of rental because I was told there's a, basically there's a set of rules. Um, but there seems to be like two sets of rules. Like originally... Um, I, when I'm only going to rent once or twice, I come in, which is normal. You come in and, and get a key the day before the event. When we started um, booking like three per month, the ladies in the front, it was later in 2023. They said to make it easier for paperwork and for me coming back and forth. I pay a $50 deposit for a key. My name goes in a book. I get the key. I'm responsible for it. At the end of 2023, I'm um, to bring the key back. They close off the year end. And then in 2024, um, if we're going to continue, I come in, it's a $100 deposit, which I did, um, and had the key. On Thursday, I'm, sh I'm not sure what the date is, uh, Jake Detler phoned and said there's um, an individual who has filed a complaint that I'm getting special treatment 
from Jake because I have this key. So until it gets resolved, can you bring the key back? So I came on Thursday, dropped off the key. I asked the ladies at the front desk. They didn't know what it was about. I couldn't get really information. I didn't want to put Jake on the spot. So he said, whatever concerns you have, you've never really explained to council what, what you're doing. So like I've had, I think it's three, might be four meetings with Jason Sands, who's not here for a while, uh, but Jason and Jake. So when we were originally talking about, we, the charity group, um, putting on events, the first meeting was, what do you intend to do? What are you thinking? So right up front, I said, we want to do a benefit breakfast, two games nights. We did this kind of stuff in Moscow. It worked really well. I'd like to do it in Enterprise. So it was basically, we're not sure um, how many people are going to come, but let's try it. So we kind of set the parameters on how it was going to be. Um, at, at the beginning, there's there's cleaning supplies available. There was a closet or um, uh, access janitor's room that Dawn left open a couple of times. Um, nothing was taken, nothing was damaged. Um, and then after about, I think it was two games nights, he said, it's now locked. I have no access to it. So without getting into it too much, it's just becoming very, very difficult. It's well documented. I've spoken with Jason, unfortunately is not here. Jason and Jake have been involved in two or three meetings where I've kind of pointed out it's becoming very difficult for me understanding what the rules are because it seems like, um, I guess if I, I, the first games night in November, I had a popcorn machine and we we're giving free popcorn to um, whoever was attending. Donnie came in and said, I'm not allowed to have popcorn. It stinks the building up, unplug it, shut the machine down. We were three quarters halfway through the night and I said, well, the popcorn's already made. Um, so then the following week when I came in to ask, uh, the other comment that Don said was, he has final say on everything that happens at the Enterprise Hall. So I was under the impression he ran the hall and whatever he said went. Approximately two weeks. I can provide more information if you need it, but roughly a couple of weeks later, had another meeting with Jason Sands and Jake and mentioned I'm having some concerns. Um, they said it's, in fact, it's not true. He doesn't have final say in the building. Um, so there's a lot of confusion on, on my part because I don't understand. It seems like there was parameters or rules set up, and I think I understand them but then everything keeps changing whenever Dawn's involved. So it's just, it's an unfortunate thing, but it's becoming more difficult for us. And then scheduling is becoming a concern. So I'm not exactly sure at one time, I spoke with Rob on the phone um, earlier on, and he had mentioned that, that Dawn was a steward. And I'm not sure what his title is, if he's a volunteer or if he's an employee of Stone Mills Township, I'm not sure. Um, but I just, it, it seems like the, the friction is getting worse. It's becoming more difficult for us to do a basic charity thing. Um, and the example is like on the 24th, when I asked Mabel if it's available or not, because initially I was told I couldn't have it. She mentioned this morning that the, whoever it is that's renting said I could. So now I'm confused. I don't know, can I advertise that I have the games night on the 24th or I don't? Because I'm not really sure who looks after the scheduling. Because I thought initially in 20, late middle of 2023 and then 24, I come in, we put it in a book, I have them. Now I understand we're getting a cut rate on getting it because it's a charity. Um, one thing they did mention earlier on, and that was, I think, Jason and Jake Detler in one of the meetings that we had, I'm not paying very much for the hall, and I appreciate it. Uh, we're, we're building a lot of, of um, I don't know what you call it, community outreach, I guess, for lack of a better term. So there's a lot of people that are coming and enjoying the hall and playing the games. Um, I'm, I'm just confused on what the standard is. Okay, so...
just sorry, Jake, I didn't have my mic on. Um, if you could just elaborate, Jake, on, on your take on uh, on the uh, uh, the rules and procedures at Enterprise Hall, and and if they need some clarification, go ahead. Yeah. So just just the the scheduling. Well, just Mr. Neisman is is uh, confused about scheduling. It, according to him, he's booked a hall and then been told he doesn't have it. Um, uh, you know, uh, who makes the final decision on scheduling? Um, how, how do you see a resolution to this situation? We've, we've got some users of the hall here who seem to be doing some good things for the community. Uh, I'd like to see them personally be able to use the hall in a responsible manner, in a way that uh, is uh, according to the rules and procedures we already have. If there's some confusion about our rules and procedures that needs clarity, do we need to update those rules and procedures? That's all. How, how do we run this and, and keep it running smoothly so everybody knows where they stand? Yes, through your, through your, your worship, um, our rental procedures, uh, property rentals procedures, bylaw, I think that's what it was called, was, was in 2020. Um, it's not that long. It's pretty short and uh that's something that i'm looking to update and I'm, i apologize to council for not getting this longer more terms of reference and update um which is going to um include kind of more nuance into each building uh, i apologize that i haven't got that out um and hasn't haven't got that in front of you at a council meeting um but yeah the the one that we have now uh states that you can rent it Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, uh, I know that uh, Don Fenwick found that um, uh, something that was difficult for him, right? I mean, it's, he was generally used to cleaning after every event. And I think this was something that he requested that there would be a day in between events. And that's maybe what led to this. Um, uh, some of the halls, like uh, at, at Newburgh Hall, um, I mean, it's busier and there are weeks that it is ran Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And um, the cleaner sometimes doesn't get there between rentals, but it also says in the rental bylaw that you should leave the hall as you as you got it. Um, meaning that if you, you know, spill coke all over the floor that you should clean it up. Um, and so... Um, to be honest with you, it worked. Um, that's the background on that. Um, I know that uh, um, there's been a party uh, upset uh, with me because sometimes Mr. Neisman, if he knows that it's not booked, like, you know, games night, um, if it's not booked, it's rarely booked on a Thursday, he would go in uh, a day earlier and set up. And, and that's just part of the, the conflict and tension that, uh, that you've been hearing about. Um, in terms of the key, I can provide a little background on that. Um, yeah, so the frontline staff are used to dealing with users, regular users of facilities and it wasn't a decision of me or any other manager when they came in uh, and looked at John had, you know, booked, you know, in, I think in November, all of these um, dates moving forward for his game nights and his breakfast, they looked at him like a regular user and it would be not only a waste of time for John to be dropping off keys and picking up keys six times a month, um, that it would be also a waste of frontline staff time issuing receipts for key deposits and issuing receipts for giving the money back for key deposits. And really it was just a decision made by them, which to me, I would argue makes sense. Um, there are no regular users though, otherwise, and haven't been for a long time at the enterprise community hall. And that was something that, that maybe, um, was new to uh, parties that are regular involved in the enterprise hall. Um, yeah, someone like uh, other users, I was just talking to Dennis Dressler, who 
runs the enter or the uh, Tamworth Euchre Group every Friday afternoon, and he said, "Yeah, me and another guy have had uh, a key, a permanent key, for years to the Tamworth Hall, and and it just just it is something that it makes sense if he's using it, you know, on a weekly or biweekly basis. Um, you know, it's it's a lot to ask a person to uh, to drop off and pick up keys every week. So, anyways." I hope these answer your questions. So. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Jake. Um, uh, John, uh, so we've got to deal with the, with these concerns. Um, I'll just put that on hold for a moment. Is there anything else you wanted to address um, at, at this point? Uh, you've, you've got a report here that includes, it looks like email exchanges or something, uh, or Facebook. Uh, um. Yeah, it's just, so basically there's, the the good news about what's happening in the enterprise hall and the amount of money that we're donating and the good things that are happening if there's not time i just council is not aware of what i did or helped with at the moscow but if you're out of time maybe it's another night or something um so there was a lot of vandalism at the moscow ball diamond last year um so without boring you too much i don't live very far from there Millsap road is maybe a four minute drive from my shop um i would kind of cut across Millsap every once in a while if i was trailering or something and and it was ticking me off because i would drive by and i would see an outhouse dumped on its side or i drive by and the canteen the big window was flopping in the wind so i'd pull in and you'd see where somebody tried to start a fire um, next time I drove by, there's the bleachers and they're very, very heavy and they're flipped over. Um, so I, I got two guys from my shop. So it took three of us to flip the bleachers back over and kind of put them in the position where they need to be. So I called the township office. It was midsummer, I'm guessing last year and said, I don't want anything for it. This is ticking me off. People have no respect for property. So there's two boards that were broken. Who do I talk to about a couple of boards? My wife and I will put them in and then maybe they'll leave the bleachers alone. And then am I allowed to kind of help with this canteen because they're, they either kick in the door or they kick in the canteen window. So um, I was told at that time that Al Fenwick looks after like the ball diamond in Moscow. Um, so he was nice enough and he said, are you sure? Like what's the catch? I said, there's no catch. Just it's bugging me and I, I want to put, so we put a couple of, he's provided us with the boards. My wife and I went over, installed them, lined them up. And then I went to a couple of neighbors and said, are you hearing what's going on? Like, do you see it? Cause there's like, they're trying to start fires. They, they kick in the window, they kick in the door, they gather up whatever they can find for garbage. You can see where they tried to burn it. It's cinder walls, but it's, it's wooden. And I'm like, there's no respect for things. It was driving me crazy. So then, um, I say, can I help out? It'll be a trial. Let's see what we can do. So then um, he spoke to, uh, not to put Jake, but I think put him on the spot again. Um, so I said, if I come over and just kind of keep an eye on it, if the outhouse gets knocked over, I'll flip it back up. I'll call who you rent it from. And maybe there's a chain or something to hold it in place. There's got to be an easy way. So I went over a couple of times my pressure washer because there's blue. I don't know what that, it's not dye, but it was all over. So I, I went in with a pressure washer, cleaned it all, and it eventually, that part stopped. So then I just put something on Facebook showing that there's vandalism going on. And it all started with the public saying it's Stone Mills Township's fault. It's the OPP's fault. And I just said, no, it's not. It's, it's property like your neighbor, and we need to get involved. We need to get, not neighborhood watch, but we need people to kind of watch over it. So it was really nice because there's probably about 250 people that got involved. There is a, a couple that donated a, a video camera surveillance system and it was free. So I called uh, Al and said, I've got this video camera um, or cameras, plural. Um, they donated it, it's free. Can I put it up? And he said, before that, we're going to talk to Jake because there should be a light, a dusk to dawn solar light if we put a light up that helps deter people away jake made that happen whoever used an electrician they put the light up um, and then my wife and i installed the cameras al fenwick has access to it in case there was damage he can 
play the tape or whatever. I don't know the technology part, but um, so we we were very we I was very aggressive on Facebook saying it's now protected. It's a trial. I hope it works. You know, thank you to the people that donated uh, the camera and stuff. So since then, there's been absolutely. I hope I don't regret it. There's no damage since. So it, it worked out really well. Once that was done, there was a bunch of people that said we should play baseball because there's no baseball or softball going on in Moscow. So I got permission, and we were just saying it's not a league or anything. It's just whoever wants to come out and play, any age group. We're going to warm up at 2.30, play at 3 on Sunday afternoon. I took my barbecue over, and we had a barbecue after. Um, and we had, I think they're seven or eight years old until eight, like eight to 85 years of age. There was 30 to 40 people that come every Sunday afternoon and play in Moscow. Um, and most of those people were saying how great it is that we're watching the diamond. So now the neighbors are communicating with each other. And, um, so I wanted to mention that because when enterprise softball said they, they're okay with money. And then Yarker, I went to Yarker, um, to the ball diamond there, and I, I took pictures. I, I didn't bring anything. I apologize. But the vandal, the disrespect there is, is crazy. So there's all this graffiti and nasty stuff sprayed all over. They've busted in there. Whatever that, um, that powder is they use for the lines, it's everywhere. Like, it's just a disrespectful mess. Um, so I kind of posted something saying, this is unfortunate, and then... I know some of these are like a signature, so there's there's a certain style they use, and there's a certain words that some of these kids will spray on. Um, so there was a basically a, a public I don't know if you call it an outcry, but there was 16 or 17 people that reached out and said, "Whatever you want to do to clean this, call me. I want to come and help." In the meantime, um, I have it, my wife wrote it down. There is a paint company, and I believe it's called is it Pete's? Sorry, I should have been more prepared. I believe it's Pete's, yeah, Pete's painting. So he saw the pictures and the response. I don't know this person. He just called and said, I own Pete's painting. I have uh, three full crews. I can see what you want to do there. I would like to donate the materials and my time, and I'll bring a crew out, and I'd like to, to paint the building and get rid of all the graffiti no charge. And I said, what do you need before you can do it? He said, I just need someone to go in to pressure wash it because it's another crew another day. So if somebody could go in there and, and basically pressure wash the outside of the building and have it ready, then I'll tell you when. And then the crew, my crew will come in. So me being me, I said, not to ask for too much, but if, if you're able to paint the building, then the roof is going to look funny because the roof is quite rusty. And he kind of laughed and said, you're right. So then someone's going to say, why didn't I paint the roof? So he's offered to paint the roof and the, the outside of the building. So it's no cost. Now, I understand. I, I, can't, I don't have the authority to say, yeah, go ahead and do it. So um, I had mentioned to Al, because he looks after that ball diamond. And then he said, next time you go to council, mention it. Um, so I, I'm not, I apologize. I don't know what the procedure is. If I have to ask for permission because I, I would volunteer. I have um, a pressure washer and a big tank on my car hauler. So I don't know if I need permission from council to go to Yarker before the paint fellow comes because I can pressure wash the outside of the building so it's ready for him. And then is it okay for, because he's got the insurance and Wemis and all the stuff he's supposed to have. Is it okay for him to donate and do all that? Like, I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's. I mean, that's that's the that's the right question. Okay. Is, uh, what, what's the procedure here? Yeah. And obviously, um, what the township is concerned about is uh, communication and liability. So, uh, it would be, Jake. What would your your preference be uh, for something like this? You've got a volunteer group that's that wants to help out with with a ball diamond and and graffiti. Uh, how would you like this to travel through official channels from your standpoint? Would it be through Al or through you? Um, and, and what, what is our, our township uh, 
insurance uh, for something like this? Would it would it fall under the, the blanket coverage uh, if we have volunteers working uh, on our uh, property? Through your worship, um, yeah. Um, in terms of it's 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 hard to to say. I mean, in terms of let's just say it, the uh, there's there's ball fields and properties that we have that still rely on volunteers. A good example is the Enterprise Rink, where uh, copious amounts of hours go into um, building this rink, and it's just a lot of the times uh, Councillor Fenwick, you know, has a has a um, you know, a, a generic text message that goes out to a lot of people and they, they tell their friends and people just show up that maybe are new to enterprise or whatever and, and put in time. Um, yeah, I, I'm open to council's discretion on somebody. Um, like like it, it would be difficult, I think, to say to Mr. Neisman who wants to donate his time um, and some some of his work, you know, based on liability that he wants to pressure wash a building. And uh, anyways, I'm open to council's discretion on that. But, um, you know, I, I don't I don't know. I've kind of always uh, I've know I've done a, a little bit of volunteering in my time. And, and it would be unfortunate if we just kind of um, kind of turn our back on volunteers in our community that they are going to donate their time because they might slip and fall. Well, I know, I know it's ridiculous. And, and the example of, of Rob and the, the volunteers, exactly. the rink, it's, it's the same kind of situation. Um, I don't want to take a whole lot more time on this, but um, there's a couple of council questions. I should uh, entertain councillors. Wendy, you had your hand up first. Uh, just coming back to Jake's comment about liability. So I, I, it would be nice to know the answer to that, that if, if Mr. Nisem uh, and his volunteers went over and, uh, you know, pressure washed, the, the structures that he's been referring to and he somebody did slip in the water or whatever and broke a leg or a hip or what whatever um is our is our insurance policy going to cover him we've given him permission to do assuming we've given him permission um i, I guess i would like to know that our insurance company is going to cover it and if not would it be a better plan to have the yarker fire department go there and pressure wash the building the day before whom we know would be absolutely covered for something like that. Yeah, or our staff, yeah. Or st okay, yes. so that's one good point. Wendy, you had a good question? Um, so my experience with uh, volunteers and getting them to do um, uh, labor, kind of labor work, is usually, I would imagine the township is covered, but the big thing is there's usually a waiver involved and the person signs this waiver saying they're a volunteer. And so the waiver also states that any compensation the township's not responsible for. So usually that's involved and then the township is covered because they are covered for when people come in and, and help. The other nice thing with doing something like this is the township then starts to collect volunteer names. Like, look at all these people that have volunteered to do something or the other. But I, I really think they would be covered and waivers are one of the best things to use when you're asking people to do something out of the, the norm my suggestion is check that out yeah i agree thanks winnie is there someone else yeah go ahead Doug. say so, uh, on the volunteer thing we've already touched on the edge of it that volunteers are important for us and in fact we've had volunteers for years okay for years all kinds of volunteers and many different communities doing many different things maybe we need to catch up to the times on just how we do it but one of the things that we have done over the years that I know is extremely important is we have to be aware of what they're doing. And I think maybe Wendy, Wendy, Wendy's idea, it touches on the same thing. Uh, the One of the worst things that can happen is to find out, oh, so-and-so is doing something somewhere and nobody knows anything about it. So you don't know if it's being paid for or if it, what the process is, whatever. And again, when it comes to liability, well, who give them permission to be there? So we, what one of those questions, and it's not just John you, it's everybody, we need to know roughly what they're doing. 
the biggest surprise that I think in all my years on councils I got is have somebody talk to me on the street corner and say, did you know they're building something somewhere? And I didn't know anything about it. You know, it looks, it just, you're not doing your job, you know. So that's something that's very important. I, I wanted to mention, we're, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to you on all the stuff. I'm sure we will. But I did mention something here that just crossed my mind when you were talking, and that was the yearly schedule, okay? And I recognize you need, you'd like to have certain dates, okay? And I'm not aware of what goes on in Enterprise Hall as far as the history of it, as far as who uses it which night, okay? But I would suggest that at least the yearly schedule is a compromise situation, because if somebody's regularly scheduled a New Year's Eve dance or Halloween dance or something, they're not going to be very pleased if that date all of a sudden disappears that they've used. So, I mean, that's a, to me, that's a compromise situation on that. And then that's, uh, that's all I got to say for right now. Yeah. Anyone else? Okay. I, I, yes, Chris, Lee, go ahead. Uh, just sort of along that lines, I've also got a call from someone who said that they were finding difficulty, that they knew the hall was so booked well in advance that they were having trouble. Like, what if they wanted to use it? What if they wanted to put on something there? So there may be either you have to accept, like, compromise for your schedule or maybe we need like you can only book six months or three months something for that um, because there are events that are annual events that have went on for several years at the hall and so we need to be able to accommodate these like long-standing events as well so okay uh, I want to wrap this up um, so I need to I need some direction from council I need a motion uh, in, in terms of getting clarity for scheduling so Mr. Neisman uh, doesn't run into any confusion. Uh, Jake, you were suggesting that uh, you want to uh, sort of fine tune some of the, the rules and procedures at different halls. Would that be something that uh, uh, would be coming fairly shortly then? Yeah, through your worship, <clears throat> this has kind of been a festering thing. And the more <laughs> I come into work, the more, um, to me, I need to produce this report um, as time goes on because um, it's just really needed. And it's like a festering wound that needs to be cared for here. So uh, I'm going to do I'm going to do whatever I can to get this report to the next meeting. So okay, that sounds good. Wendy, you had something. I'll get to you, Sherry. Uh, yeah. Yes, I know. Uh, when council reviewed the bylaws, uh, the procedural bylaw, a few of the councilors got together with. Um, uh, the CAO at the time, and it seemed to be, I thought it was a really good <laughs> session, and I was just wondering if it wouldn't be a good idea um, that a few councillors sat with Jake and went over some of this, because we're all coming from different areas in the township, and we would be bringing different ideas to the party that he might not consider, um, and it might help in some of the, you know, problem-solving, decision-making plans of being, as he said, uh, building specific, I think is how he worded it. Um, so I, I'm just wondering what council thinks about a little ad hoc committee to help Jake with this project. Okay. Uh, it sounds like Jake's on the verge of, of submitting something. Perhaps once he submits his draft, um, something like that might be a good idea. Meanwhile, if you know something specific at the hall in your community, let Jake know. Sherry, go ahead. If I'm not mistaken, our new website's going to have a um, like an interactive booking or calendar, isn't it, for the for the halls? Was that am I crazy? Um, I don't because know. I'm thinking if if it did have something like that, if we had um, you know the specific hall rules for people can go right online and see it. They can see when it's available. If it was an interactive type thing, and then. The rules are right there. Anybody can see them anytime. Yeah, that should be clear. Anyone else? So, uh, Rob, you go ahead. Yeah, and I think Wend is on to something there. Um, we, I was on that bylaw committee, and we did bring up the fact that each specific facility has a different purpose. There are certain things that are included. There are certain things that aren't. Some have a bar. Some do not. Some are special cages permits. Um, and how it's structured. Um, I did bring it up with, uh, with Chief Dettler, um, raised my concern that it would avoid a lot of problems, and unfortunately, here we are. 
So I'm too bad we didn't get on it earlier, but that's just the way it is. So now we need to get on it. But definitely Jason did bring up the fact that uh, the new website might contain that, including ice rental times at the rec center. So I think that's a good idea. We wait for the report and then maybe we should form. I'd like to be on that committee um, and uh, we'll go back and revisit that. We should have dealt with earlier. Yes. Uh, through you, Reeve Wives. Um, so township staff um, have looked at an online booking tool. Um, so it won't be through the website, but a link will be posted on the new website and then you can book it online. Uh, there will be a um, community calendar. So community groups can submit their um, their events happening in the township. It would come to staff, staff would review, make sure it's appropriate for the website content, and then it would be published onto a community event calendar so you could see local events happening. Um, with respect to the policy and and doing um, like a, a subcommittee of council, um, it might be worthwhile setting up a committee of the whole meeting. Um, and then that way every council member can um, discuss and review any policies that have been presented by staff and it will give everyone kind of an informal hand at providing their feedback on the policy. So just a, a suggestion that committee of the whole could be a good option as well. I think that's a good idea. Anyone else at this point? Then uh, we need a motion to receive and some direction that summarizes uh, some of our discussion here. Sherry, go ahead. Just make a motion. And what would it include? To, well, just to... Um, yeah, get a report from Jake. And, and then discuss uh, yep. how we're going to act on it. Yep. Okay, I think that's general enough uh, that it deals with the issue at hand. Any further discussion? Got to get a seconder for that. Uh, Crystal Lee, anyone else? All in favor? That's carried. Thanks, John. That's another question. What is the new website? And that's not a silly question. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, through you. So how, how do I solve my two main things is from an advertising ad agent point for it, yes or no. I have an unknown deposit on the key. If I gain the key back, do I have to go back again? But on my end, you have to resolve any of my issues. Right. So is it something that, is that a, it, it shouldn't need a lot of time. Did you have some input on that? Crystal, you, you had your hand up. I was just thinking that we sort of need this report and sort of, I don't know how other people feel, but I, I don't want to contribute to like tensions rising further. So I don't know how to respond. I feel like if you missed a games night in this for the sake of waiting on this report in which we could fine tune things, is that okay with you? Do you think that's not okay? You demand this games night? Okay. Sorry, I'm sorry. Um, once you train people, because there's a lot of people that look forward to going to games night, and I would encourage, I know you have a very busy schedule, until you go to a games night, you, you have to experience it. Like there's different age groups. There's lots of nice stories that you hear. There's children that are very shy that get bullied, but they come to games night. They ask their parents or grandparents, is it this Friday or is it next Friday? It's becoming more confusing because it's not this Friday. It's not next Friday. It might be. So we've got people asking when is the next games night? So I, because I saw a concern We've, we've lost our games night on the 10th because there's a dance booked. I asked the general public that's come to the games nights, can we try a Wednesday night? How do you feel about it? Nobody wants to go Wednesday. Well, there's two older people, but of the 35 to 40-ish people that have enjoyed this, they will not go on a Wednesday. So now it's kind of up in the air. So now like you're, you're building a brand or you're, you're building a, a following, and now... So demand, I don't know if that's the right word, but it, we, we need some kind of clarity because we got a really good thing going here and I don't know what to tell the people because I've lost the 10th and I'm ready to do it on the 24th, but am I allowed to say I'm on the 24th? So if the 24th is open. It is open. Then book it. Okay. And then what should I do? Do I asked to come back in a couple of weeks to review it or like what I just 
it's a lot of confusion and it shouldn't really be that hard for volunteers. We, so far we've given about 600 hours of all of our volunteers to do breakfast and we're donating 100% of all the proceeds. So we've got a couple of volunteers that are kind of dropping off because they're saying it's getting too confusing. It's lack of a better term, it's, it's too political for us. I just want it so it's easy so we're not offending people and I don't really have any answers and I don't understand the key part when I have a deposit. So, cause I've got stuff in a closet that's for like for the kitchen stuff. So is, is it fair to ask for the key? But like, I don't understand why I had to return the key, I guess would be the. Go ahead, Ron. Is the key deposit not simply so that when we have to make another key, it's not so that a person can keep it indefinitely. It's there so that if they never come back with it, we have to send staff off to get one cut. I believe that's the purpose of a deposit for the key, not necessarily anything else. I don't know of anybody else who has a permanent key to, I, that's news to me that we have another group that has access to one of our township buildings indefinitely with no monitoring. We don't have so, cameras or anything. So for the 2023. For 2023, if it was say October, they told me that it's because it's passed halfway through the year, they were talking like it was policy. So maybe it's not. So the, the support staff at the front told me because it's later in the year, it's a $50 deposit and your name goes in the book. It has a registered number with the key. So we know you have it, but at the end of the year, you must bring it back. And then it's a hundred dollars. And once again, it seems like it's policy. So in 2024, come the second week, of January, you're going to book all the dates that you'd like to have. Um, and I'm not saying that we're going to book because I know there's a Halloween dance. Rob puts on a Halloween dance. I'm not expecting to have a games night or something. That's a conflict there. So it's it's just a consistency thing. If we're going to have a breakfast on the third Saturday of every month, it's right. The, the community knows that that's the date, and it's every second Friday night is a games night. If that works out, great. But the the key, the way it was explained to me, and then I get a call on Thursday saying there's favoritism. You got to bring the key back. I don't understand. I, d I don't, I could see it if I was vandalizing or if I was stealing stuff or things are going missing, but I, I don't know how it's presented as it's a policy at the front desk. I've been running for five months this way and then Thursday return the key. I don't get it. Okay. So we have to work out a policy on the key. I mean, on the face of it, a trusted person should be able to have a key. How many people though? in the township are going to basically have a key to a township building in their pocket just about all the time. Is, is that a good thing or not? We're going to have to think about that. Sure. Yeah. So we'll book your 24th. Okay. You'll just have to wait about the key because that'll be addressed in Jake's report. Okay. Thanks, Sean. Good, good discussion. Yeah. Clarification. Yeah. Um, just seeking clarification um, that staff are bringing report back on hall policy options to a committee of a whole meeting. Okay. Yeah, I think that's probably good because, I mean, I've let a delegation go three times as long as usual. And if this is going to turn out to be an issue that needs a lot of discussion, I think committee of the whole is better rather than take up part of a council. And there was names, names shouldn't be used in public. Yeah. Okay, moving on down, uh, I think the next thing we've got here is 8.3 is our township clerk, uh, records retention bylaw. Uh, can I get a motion to receive this ahead of time, Wenda and Sherry? Go ahead, Randy. Uh, through you, Reeve Wise. So the last retention bylaw was presented in 2007. Um, so upon review, um, there was um, updates that were required, and these are to meet legislative requirements um, and best practices. Uh, so the attached draft bylaw is presented for your consideration um, and is using the, um, the retention is based off the, um, the Tom Rums classification system. Uh, so if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Uh, yes, I, I, did you send that email, Brandy, to everybody? Uh, is it all right if I open it up? An email that she sent to me with response to a question. I just need to refer to it. Yes, yeah, sure, go ahead. Okay, Yeah. I think I turned my phone off. Oh, no, here we go. 
So I did have one question. I found it really interesting. H14 and H15 um, was uh, a grievance, uh, how long we retain records that pertain to grievances. It was 10 years. And then immediately below it, H15 was um, harassment and violence, which to me are grievances of the top shelf. Uh, it was only three years. <laughs> And I, I couldn't wrap my head around that. And I thought maybe maybe the numbers got switched or I, anyway. So Brandy, uh, I asked her about that face-to-face -face today. And she sent an email out just saying that as a council, we're allowed to um, consider any retention period that, that differs from this um, reference that she's been using. So I would like to suggest that we retain harassment and violence um, reports longer than three years. Certainly as long as grievances, because I think they are a grievance. That was the only real thing that I could come up with. Yeah. Anyone else? Well, just, just along that subject, I mean, and uh, we had for things like that, we had a five year policy but they left the personnel file that was, was kind of like a secondary file it went into. So you could go back to it if you had to. Um, I don't think it matters. Three years is fine with me. Yeah. Okay. Just, I just kind of wondered about the legality of actually what we used to do. We had two files. We had an old stale file, an old file where grievances stayed into it or not grievances, sorry. Uh, write-ups and that sort of thing, like harassment report. But fine, three years is fine. I'm suggesting we keep them as long as we can. Sorry. Anyone else? Yes, go ahead, Brandy. Um, so when when the records speak to grievances, um, that would mostly be around staff grievances uh, with their employment, um, harassment and violence that could be looked at in any manner. So um, harassment and violence from a resident, from a staff member, from a council member, uh, really anyone that could be applicable to. And th I believe the reason for three years is it has to do with the Limitations Act. Um, so any um, filing for violence or grievance that has been set settled within like a court settlement, um, you, you couldn't go back and grieve it. You couldn't go back and open that back up. Um, because it's already been dealt with. Um, so it, that that would fall under the, the limitations act of, of the actions against it. So you're, you're basically saying we couldn't legally extend that three-year period because there's a statute of limitations involved? You could keep the record for as long as you want, um, but using that record in a legal sense, if the matter's already been dealt with, um, you wouldn't be able to do that is my understanding. Um, but, you, I mean, you could keep it if you had an employee um, that maybe had a periodical every, you know, four years are having harassment or violence claims against them, you would probably want to have that recorded history. Um, so, so records can be discretionary, best practice, or um, what council wants to set. So... I'm not entirely clear then. So um, if, if you kept the record, um, it, it wouldn't be something that um, you would be acting on in any regard, but it would be a reference point um, if you had to make an unrelated decision about an employee in terms of, say, if they were applied for another position or something like that. Um, three Reefwise. Um, so if you trying to think of a relevant example. Yeah. Um, like if you had a resident that came in and um, staff were complaining about harassment by the resident, uh, there would be a file created for it. Um, if no action was taken and five years went by and the resident came back in and did the same harassment, 
the limitations act, you couldn't go back to that first point in time and use that um, for your legal proceedings is my interpretation. However, if they are continuing with any harassment, you at least have that record and then you can set policies or kind of um, you could ensure that there's multiple staff members around when that individual comes in. So a relevant, a, a record could be useful in that sense to keep it past the three years. So it wouldn't contribute to any action against that individual, but it could provide precautions for staff. Yeah, and, and this is my interpretation um, of the legislation. Um, I am not a lawyer, so I, I, I can't say for sure that it wouldn't be relevant and used in court if something like that went to a court proceeding, but that's just how I'm interpreting it um, falling under the Limitations Act. You can only take action on a claim um, within a certain amount of time, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. It, it applies to all kinds of legal situations. So, uh, Wenda, what, uh, give, given that, um, what would you like to see in, in the records retention policy then? to retain the record for 10 years? Um, based on what, especially based on what Brandy has just said, I think having some evidence along that line would be, it go well to protect staff. If that individual should, you know, present in, in a similar fashion within four years or six years, or, you know, there'd be um, safety built into the awareness. It's an awareness, I guess. And if you lose that file after three years, you've lost that awareness, really. You've lost the institutional awareness, staff changes and so on and so forth. And correct. Yeah. So uh, no one seems to have other concerns. Do you want to make a motion that, in, that includes that? Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. That's okay. No, yeah. I, I, I was reading this as well, and I agree with Wenda. I think to myself, it doesn't cost anything to keep this information. There's no legislation saying we can't. There's only a win if potentially we need that later on. Why would you dispose of something that may have some useful purpose at some point, especially sensitive items like this? I see no reason not to keep it for the decade. I, I think it's a valuable item. We never need it, so what? We're not talking about a school bus here. <laughs> some documents, right? So I think that's a wise choice. Good, good suggestion. So you're basically seconding that? Yeah, so uh, my understanding of the motion is that uh, council received the report entitled Records Retention Bylaw Update and that bylaw 2024, uh, I'll sign a number being a bylaw to establish a corporate record classification system and retention periods for documents and records kept by the corporation of the Township of Stone Mills and to repeal bylaw 2007-406 be enacted and passed and that the Reeve and Clerk be authorized to sign and seal and that the um, retention schedule speaking to harassment and vi violence uh, be kept for a 10-year period. Mm. Okay, everyone comfortable with that? All in favor then? It's carried, thank you. Okay, uh, committee reports and committee or board reports in minutes. Anyone got anything from that one? Items for consideration, we don't have any. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Wenda. All right, I always get these two mixed up, items for consideration and items for information, so. There are none. No, <laughs> no I mean, we, I never know new where to. New business and statements for members comes next if you have something that you want to provide. I, I do, I just never know where am I going to put that. Well, so. if there's anything on the agenda, it would be there already. That, that would be up to the clerk to put items for consideration okay. or information on the agenda. We're there. We're, we're there. <laughs> You're first. <laughs> okay, so a couple. Um, um, I received a call from a constituent. Uh, they have taken down some cedar trees um, in front of the Centerville Church here. Uh, they were uh, in need of being disposed. And uh, in particular, they wanted to, they've received a lot of um, 
uh, gift donations for planting a garden there and putting a memorial plaque up for uh, Deb Thompson. And so they have about a truckload and a half of cedar brush um, that they need to take to the dump. And they were wondering if the council would, the township would consider waiving the fee for dumping the brush at the uh, at the site. So, and if that's yes, he he wanted to do it. I think tomorrow, um, and he would need some kind of a waiver or a letter or a note. I guess you could say saying that he can take it there and not have to pay the fee. So I'd like to make a motion that we uh, accept this and give uh, produce some kind of written waiver or, yes, authorization. Uh, so that's the first thing. Second thing is, uh, oh, do we want to talk about that? Because I guess I just a, made a motion. If you've got a motion, we should address it first. And okay, you need me, someone to second it. I need someone to motion. second it. Yeah. Okay, Doug. Yeah, Doug is seconding that. Any discussion? Jeff, is that, is that a, going to be a problem? That's uh, no problem. Um, if I could just, <laughs> if I could uh, just have him call me and uh, I'll make sure they don't pay any fee. Okay, thank you. So that's all in favor then? That's carried, thank you. And what have you got, Alex Wenda? Oh, it's from uh, a lady about affordable housing and um, geared to income housing in particular. Um, she was talking mostly about the, the older apartment building, I believe, um, wondering about wait lists, but they won't, I called Pellis and they won't discharge that. And um, her concern, I guess, was, um, the people that are being um, offered places there on the list, um, that um, possibly there needs to be some added education to the people because um, a couple, uh, some people she has heard have moved out fairly quickly after moving in because they didn't have a vehicle and they couldn't drive to Napanee to go and do whatever. And so they, they moved out. And maybe there ne needs to be a consideration um, I, I guess with Pellis regarding criteria, not criteria, just informing people that when they move into a, a facility like that, that they have to be aware of the fact that if they don't have a vehicle, there, there's going to be some, possibly some problems for them. And maybe even though they're next on the list, maybe they should stay on the list until a, a facility in a, in a community like Napanee comes up um, because she's, she's finding that she's still on the list and she's been waiting and waiting. And then she hears about these people who were received and then moved out and then received and then moved out. And she, that she found that frustrating. So I'm not, there's, I don't think there's anything we can do about it, but the housing unit is in our township. So maybe there is something we can do about that. And I just wasn't sure what people here thought about that. Any discussion, Doug? unit in Tamworth. Okay, I mean, I specifics, I can't talk to them, but uh, in generalities, I can. There's a seven-year waiting list to get in those homes. So I know you would think you're on the list and you're waiting and you're waiting and you're waiting, but seven years is a long time. But that's what Lynn Shenye has told me, is it takes approximately seven years to work through that list. If you're handicapped, it's, uh, it's about four years. And then they do have an emergency situation that they can work with. But uh, it's uh, the list is long already for most of the places. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, it, it seems, and no disrespect, but if someone is told that they're going to get to move into a unit in Tamworth and they get there and realize they don't have a car and can't drive to Napanee. I'm really not sure what staff should be doing. People don't realize that Tamworth is half an hour drive from Napanee. I, I really don't know what this person is expecting palace staff to be, be telling prospective residents. I mean, you don't have a car, you're offered a place in Tamworth. Come on, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> it seems ridiculous to me. In any case, Doug's right. It's a very long waiting list, and uh, um, it sounds like someone is a, a bit impatient, and understandably so. Housing is very stressful these days. 
Anything else, Wenda? Yeah, go ahead. Last thing, promise. Um, website revision, redesign. Um, is it possible to have whoever is designing this to put the civic portal like a tab on the front page? Um, oftentimes, if I'm not at my iPad and I'm going on to my laptop or going on to another computer and I want to look at the agenda or whatever under the civic portal, um, I have to scroll way, way down near the bottom. Then I think I have to click on this and maybe I have to click on that and then I have to click on that and then I have to click on that. And it's it's just, it's so important in my world that I would like it to be right on the front page as a bubble and it's civic portal bubble. Thank you. I would suggest it be called something else too. Nobody knows what the hell a civic portal is. Just put <laughs> council meeting information. Just something plain. Yeah, I, I agree. Anyone else? New business statements, members. Rob, go ahead. Pretty straightforward. I uh, just want to give everybody the update. Um, uh, we had the uh, Alzheimer's Dementia 101 gathering uh, at the Friends Meeting House in Moscow. And I was a little nervous because it is pretty specific, obviously. But I wanted it to be successful and it ended up being a great success. Um, we had approximately 20 people, um, a lot of tears, a lot of great stories. We had people that were actually neighbors that didn't know each other was dealing with this, who were in hugs at the end. It was amazing to watch. It was over two hours. Um, most of the people said they're coming to the next one regardless, even though it's just kind of the same thing again. They It turned into almost like a support group, which was just fantastic to be part of. So um, special thanks to Moscow Native Church for using that venue. Um, and again, the next one is, and my phone went on standby. I apologize. I hate using my phone, but it's uh, Wednesday, June 26th at 7 p.m., um, specifically in the evening because the sun's up much longer by then, thank goodness, um, in Stone Mills Rec Center at the Multipurpose Room. And then the next one is in November, but I'll bring that up later. So, yeah, just wanted to say that it was a great thing, and um, it, was a, it was a great time. It was nice to see everybody out, and I got a lot of positive response from it. That's great. It's good to hear. Chris Lee. Yeah, just some info from the last Quinney Conservation meeting. Uh, Max Christie, he was the chair of the Water Source Protection Committee for 17 years, one of the three remaining chairs in Ontario. And he stepped down and he said, quote, the province is ignoring rural Ontario when it comes to water source protection. And he said he's leaving partly out of his frustrations with that topic. And he gave two examples. He said the chair in Mississippi Mills has been vacant for 15 months. The province, I guess, has to, you might know this better than me, a point or somewhat involved in this process of formally appointing the chair. And he also said that he gave months notice that he would be leaving and there's been no movement to replace their chair. They're actually re rewriting their bylaws for an interim chair because now they don't have one. And the other example, which I want to tell everyone that we should all be very alarmed at, uh, is they're sounding the alarm at what may be the end of well testing uh, being covered by public health. Uh, and so whether or not this is happening since like, Hard to believe that could possibly happen, but it, a report was released in December, last December, called the Value for Money Audit in Public Health Ontario. And part of that report, it told um, KFLNA Public Health that they wanted them to implement uh, part of a 2017 plan that got put on hold because of COVID. And in that plan, it is to close the Kingston Lab for testing, which from 2019 to 2023 was the second most used public lab for testing in the province, and that's where all of our water tests are sent, and also that they're to end private well testing um, because of the cost. Um, so I just want people to be aware of that, uh, because obviously our entire, uh, we're all on wells here, and it's really important uh, that well testing not be done at the wayside. It's hard to get people to do it anyway, and once you add a cost on it, uh, we could have problems. So. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, Doug. Yes. That, I think uh, that's a great opportunity for one of the things that we can do, and that's we can move a motion to uh, support the, uh, the testing, the water testing, and the retention of the site, and we can send that to the Minister of Health and to our local MVP, MP, MPP, sorry, and uh, Rick Brzee. And, we can even, well, that's fine enough. That's enough, Phil. I was going to say circulate it, but we don't need to circulate it any further. Yep, I'll make the motion. 
Okay, just a friendly amendment. Um, uh, the KFLNA Public Health Unit is taking an issue because that report um, was suspended by COVID, but now the province is starting to talk again about health unit um, amalgamation. Back then they were talking about 10 health units in the whole province and they were gonna lump ours in with Ottawa, which we thought well, we'll get lost in the shuffle. So um, KFLNA is taking the initiative and talking to, I believe Hastings Leeds. and Leeds and Grenville about taking the lead, you know, having control over that amalgamation process. There may be discussion about where the water testing lab would be. It would make sense that it's in Kingston at Central, but it may not be. So if you could put in your motion that we want to retain water testing uh, and at a location that makes sense yep, that's right. in, in, a, in an amalgamated unit. Yep. So we can't really insist on Kingston, although that would make sense, but that it stay within our local health unit, yep. whatever that is, if that's okay. Yeah, I'd be fine with that. Okay, all in favor then. That's carried, good. I'm glad you brought that up, Crystaline. Anyone else, new business statements from members? Wendy, you have something else? Just one last thing. Um, so the flag uh, for the autism is flying high tonight. Tonight and today it was. Um, it was raised today. It was hoisted today. Yes, thanks to Jake and uh, Brandy. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Okay. If there's nothing else, uh, we have a closed uh, session uh, to deal with matters that uh, deal with identifiable individuals. So we have to go offline. And I need a motion to go into closed session. Sherry and Doug, all in favor? That's carried. Just let me know when we're off, Jeff.